Hello and welcome to this very special show from Bengaluru. Often when you think of startup, it's the VC funded urban suave phenomenon that comes to mind. Is that just a stereotype? If yes, should it be broken to make the idea of a startup more relatable to every section of the population? Also, Otherwise, is there a quintessential thinking process that defines a startup? We'll try and explore, probe all these questions with some fascinating Bengalurian minds, starting with Madan Padaki, who's an entrepreneur himself, who's uh, part of the governing council of Thai Bangalore, Malini Goel, who's written this fascinating book, Unboxing Bengaluru, where she's unboxed several fascinating Bengaluru stories. You see Mahender, who runs Hatti Kapi, what do I say, a kapi shop in Bengaluru, which uh, sort of redefines that old term out here and Vasudha Bogaraju who runs a who's turned a 40 year old family pickle business into something of a brand in Bengaluru all all of them to explore the idea what what it means to be a startup should that definition be broadened if needed or is it just semantics Madan starting with you what would be something that critically defines a startup idea and if if there is a definition, then how do we make it broad-based and expanded to, let us say, not just somebody in Bengaluru to relate with, but somebody in, let's say, a rural corner of Muzaffar Nagar in Uttar Pradesh? Absolutely, Virago. Thank you. Thank you for hosting all of us. Uh, my belief is that we are a nation of entrepreneurs with 70 million MSMEs uh, and, of course, now 100,000 startups. Uh, we are a nation of entrepreneurs. The, the issue is that as entrepreneurs, Many of us have given up on our dreams. If you ask a small local business, uh, the usual response I get is, this is all that is there, this is all I can grow, hard to grow, etc. But then there are a few who always look at the larger opportunities and figure out how I can make that happen. To me, that is an entrepreneurial thinking that is required. And we need to make entrepreneurship more aspirational rather than just saying, I'm just doing this business uh, to eke out my livelihood and I think that is the critical difference uh, that that we need to push and we see sparks of that happening how do we broad base that thinking and make mass entrepreneurship aspirational uh, is the challenge that we have in the country right interesting that you point that out uh, Malni you've unboxed several Bengaluru stories now often when you think of startup you think incubator VC funding now how do you what does this mean? I mean, you know, when you say this is the startup capital of India, does that mean that a small city doesn't have enough business startups that have come up? How do we define these things? I mean, you know, some and, and you know, possibly does that make it a very elite phenomenon and not really broad basing it? So, a couple of um, parts of to the answer, um, Vira. Uh, one is that what is a startup? Now, I think scale mindset being able to sort of take your startup to another level through structured sort of way to scale it through leverage or leveraging capital, leveraging idea, all that. So I think scale thinking is something that differentiates a startup versus millions of MSMEs in the country, right? Who may over the years remain dwarfs as, as one of the economic survey reports talked about them. So that's one big differentiator that I see. I think typically, increasingly, you see that technology plays an important role. In Even if it's a tech startup or a non-tech startup, technology has become a horizontal. And how do you deploy technology to achieve that scale? That also is becoming an important factor as startups look at growth and scale. Now, the second part is, you know, what you see in Bangalore and one typically the notion is that the city is all about tech startups. But, you know, this city is also about so many more things than just tech, tech startup. I mean, you wouldn't know that this is also a garment manufacturer hub. It's a manufacturing industry, right? Uh, you wouldn't know that a lot of ancillaries around um, HAL, which is the ISRO, right? Aerospace right. industry. They are all there in the outskirts of the city. What has happened is that these ancillaries that were located in the core of the city, the heart of the city, in, are moving towards the outskirts, but they are present. This is ISRO, HAL, all those large, large companies are located out of here. Which were also startups at some point at of time, time right? Time. They, so they feed into this startup that is available and they are ancillaries, they are startups in many ways. That's right. You make an important point there. Uh, you know, if let's say 
Mahinder a hatti kapi what would be and i'll put this very clearly you you are sophisticated when i go to a hatti kapi when i step out of the bangalore international airport and i see a hatti kapi okay it's sophisticated what's the core difference in the way you think about hatti kapi vis-a-vis -vis, let's say somebody who started a tea shop somewhere in a corner because that guy is also trying to build a business right what would be the core difference what is it that possibly you your thinking process could benefit let's say a million people who have who run tea shops around the country well absolutely i i take inspiration from the tea shop india is by large it's a tea nation no doubt about it but the scenario is changing and coffee has been uh, been a luxury now it's an essential and i come from the area where we grew coffee and it's it's always been from farmer to the consumer right i represent that i'm very proud to be there and uh, be it a coffee or a pickle and it's always treated as it's okay coffee is coffee right especially southern version of coffee is south indian filter coffee i was so glad to read yesterday's uh, the article reads about the global is trending with filter coffee i'm actually i had a sleepless night and i'm talking to you today what a timing is it and it's mahar shivaratri <laughs> it's a come it's it's a blessing in disguise for you know kind of a brand hatti coffee and We are just leverage. If you want to survive Shivaratri, you keep drinking coffee. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Only, only drink hati coffee, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, I mean, but, yeah, but. yeah. See, uh, basically, I see a huge opportunity. You need not to, you know, run cross borders. India is mass. That way, you know, we picked up the right product, uh, being from, you know, no, from. No, but what the, is it that is it the brand that you built? or what is it about the thinking process that defines let's say hatti kapi being a startup vis-a-vis -vis just being a small coffee chain see the idea of basically making it unorganized to a lovely sector what you mentioned is you get really fascinated seeing hatti kapi in airport right we welcome you actually it is so welcoming that's why we call india's welcome drink right so it is we mean it so just like you know we find this in coffee is just you know uh, i i will call it uh, very general you go out of your home left right and center you find the petty shop to coffee shop to unorganized to everything is there how do you make it beautiful we just pulled out that unorganized coffee shop my my spark was in the same area incidentally so i'm so allowed to be here i went to a very small darshani like eselvis mother knows about it they all live here right It's a lovely coffee shop, around 70 square feet. And when I see, no matter the 10 out of 10 guys who are walking out of the coffee shop, who are holding the cup of coffee, isn't it fascinating? That the spark actually hit me very hard. Then I realized there is huge potential to build this beautiful coffee, right? There is a dosa, there is a nidli, and everything is trending today. But you always have that coffee coming out. Then I went in and saw that. It's been cornered, and everyone and anyone is making a coffee. Whatever we can bring that to the front and make it beautiful. That's what we did. It's a simple two step. So, so an old idea packaged differently. Absolutely. I, I, I Absolutely. mean, with with we with that. Life to it. And and when we talk of old ideas, what your pickle business is a forty year old business. You are a I am product. You you passed out of I am Bangalore, and now you have turned what was. let's say at one point of time traditionally a home grown business into a startup today what would be then the thinking process different between the way your mother or your grandmother thought of it vis-a-vis -vis how you think about it yeah so um just to take on from there my idea was how do i uh, see india has a very large unorganized sector the organized sector like you can just count brands on your fingertips but um the unorganized sector is a larger market is a very large market and the opportunity for any brand to move from the unorganized sector to the organized sector while it is challenging the idea is about how can you take your home grown products which are really authentic to the world because if you look at it in the market today people get out to maybe a supermarket or anywhere and buy things for convenience right but if you were to ask somebody do you really like what you're eating uh you know they will uh, you know they just come back saying no we eat it like if you talk about a pickle like a pickle is the least spoken but the most important tiny bit on your plate 
right if your wife is angry with you today then uh, uh, there, there's some change not just in your today sabzi. in general yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that will compensate quickly is to add achar and say oh no but your dal tasted amazing right so what we are trying to do is uh, you know to bring that nostalgia back so when you taste something it should remind you of wow this is homemade i like i like this so um, i got the idea from there that why can't i take this homemade product from the unorganized sector and uh, you know reach it out to the world i mean and and why not uh, there are a lot of people uh, like you say most of these things like startup and all of these according to me are jargons right but people get carried away with that the fear is oh my god i mean am i supposed to think this big can i make it this big but the idea is to just take it one step at a time and then just keep feeding people good food and why not so um, so that is what i thought i should do to move from the unorganized sector and bring it closer to the organized sector mm. but then again sell it in an unorganized way as much as possible so what i am trying to do is to uh, you know come bring this into a hybrid kind of a model where people are able to taste us and then choose for themselves what is good and then buy so more like a, mo- a larger branding exercise just making subtle tweaks to a product that's already existing would be a potential idea it's not really something a revolutionary new idea that you're talking about it's the product itself right so so madan when we come down to it then is it then that thinking process that defines that whole thing that that look i think about it from a professional corporate point of view of let's say what she's saying an unorganized sector something that was being done is that what we're looking for and in that case then how do you expand this thinking process to let's say the rest of the country where the unorganized sector still dominates the business sense absolutely veera so what we are hearing is that there is that energy the enthusiasm the dream that it's a much larger market than what i am and that and that sense of uh, drive to say let me achieve it right so it is all in the mind it's about how you look at it right you can look at the same coffee and say this is just a coffee you can look at it and say hey this is the world's best coffee for my consumers the second part i think which is where the ecosystem has to come to play not just in bangalore but in all parts even in the deepest hinterlands of rural i've seen this spark i met a carpenter in a village in gadag who without knowing what ikea is explained to me how he wants to build the ikea of that district he says if if 10 orders come to me for 10 different tables why should i create it all over again why can't i do modular right so the point is as a society we look down upon such businesses to say hey you're just a carpenter you're just a coffee guy you're just a darshini but if we were to say listen the market the consumer experience is the wonderful pickle that you're making can be a global phenomena how can you start thinking that way and how can we together help you to achieve that dream right we all hear of startup funding startup funding but if i go to a bank i am looked down upon as a business guy and i am asked some 100 questions before i even get a lakh of rupees mm. how can we make that easier mm. how can we build that self respect that you're looking at an entrepreneur you know my f- yeah you know you're basically looking at expanding it and and i bring that question across how do you then make it more relatable for instance malni how do you call a startup in hindi or uh, what do you say for a startup in kannada because i can understand you know when i live in bangalore yeah. startup startup all yeah. of us are excited yeah. about startup I don't see the same excitement about the term startup Correct. when I go let's say to a rural hubli or anything sir I've started a business mm. so how do you make it more relatable to a country of this nature and I'm asking this primarily because the idea is there right there will be 100 families which are making pickles or coffee it's because of this thinking process that it's turned into a brand mm. now do you essentially need somebody with that thinking process to go to the person with the idea or can we ensure that this thinking process gets so broad based that the person with the idea can automatically turn it in any corner of this country so one of the things so one to answer i don't i can't think of a word mm. startup in hindi particularly right and i think startup has come to mean the same thing in different languages so pe- different languages people understand now one of the ways to sort of popularize is popular culture right and mm-hmm. shark tank typically i think is has done a great job no matter how much branding all that you can talk in media etc what shark tank has managed mm-hmm. to do is in tier 2 tier 3 cities showed them the world right what it exists 
and i think popular culture the moment that catches on it's one of the most powerful way to sort of popularize the idea the construct of startup um, that's one I, and you'll see that more and more i know that um, there are some sort of filmmaking companies in bombay sort of looking at um, serials um, focused on startups and these are the ways you popularize in the mindset cultural mindset of the people so i think that's where i would think a lot of push catalyst catalyst would happen interesting interesting that you make that let's say you go back to kurg you know in bangalore you would be part of the startup community in kurg what would you define it as i mean would you just define hatti kapi as look it's a chain of kapi shops or would you say look this is a startup idea this is a brand i'm building i mean how do you relate it to let's say the workers in kurg and the and the population there yeah it's an interesting question i'm delighted to answer this i go back to the roots i come from sakleshpur where coffee is grown uh, and it's all the proximity of chikmangalur sakleshpur and kur all in the proximity and i pick the tiniest of the grower and i want to know what is his aspiration you will just grow and leave it there and someone will bag that coffee and send it to wherever the market that doesn't end there actually when i go and meet them this world coffee conference recently concluded in bangalore what we did we went to a small in canada it is called gramanta you want to answer me for what is startup in canada it is modalane hedge the first step that is what it makes the modalane hedge modalane hedge the first step it's all about for an entrepreneur he has to start if you say startup at a village he will look up right so we have to say neenu modalane hedge neen munde ba you step out of your home you are in a comfort zone no matter you grow coffee you trade coffee you export coffee you still in the you are in a conclave can you just come out that's what we do we went to that small jambadi grama in sakleshpur where i grow coffee went to 30 homes where they grow uh, 30 bags of 40 bags to 100 bags so very tiny growers right i went them and said you want to see a world coffee forum have you ever seen hangandre henu what is it right then i will not explain i'll take you there you have to just follow me that is where you have to come out and put that modalane hedge right i pulled out all these 40 growers pulled all their coffee at home and made a beautiful jambadi grama coffee right and got them to world coffee conference first time happening in india over the 40 years and i am very proud to be part of the hatti coffee had a phenomenal store and we called all these growers made them launch jambadi coffee for the world market okay that is where i get inspired that's what we are supposed to do it go to each village and pick those small growers with their never knew they travel to bangalore with so much of excitement and they today they shouldn't get intimidated by that exactly. thought uh, i think the core aspect of what exactly. we are saying when i say language and breaking the language barrier is that they shouldn't get intimidated yeah. by the thought that oh okay this is a sophisticated environment where we need to speak in english and that's the only way we're going to get exactly. that that's that's the barrier that we need to break right like for instance possibly that's the psychological barrier that kept your family business a family business till somebody turns around and says that no look i can be as big as somebody else that's the defining aspect yes absolutely in fact in my own experience uh, when i formally joined my mother in uh, 2018 uh, and i went uh, i used to approach banks and tell them that sir i've heard that there are startup loans and they would say uh, yeah so what is your app idea and i'm like uh, well i don't have an app um, i have a website though on which you can buy pickles and they were like madam this is startup you this what you're talking about is pickles so it's not the same thing and i actually had um, until actually i met madan and the whole team i um, i w- i was quite intimidated that you know if i go out to somebody and say that hey look i want to take this unorganized uh, pro- uh, you know product from the unorganized sector and then make it a brand um, i I've, i've had a lot of people laugh at me saying that ye dupin ka yashte you know and i'm like yes but but sir it's different and they're like app irbeku madam you should have an app you are you so so the word startup was always related to just tech 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 all the time while i have come from the it industry i've had the uh, privilege of working in the it industry tech is only an enabler right, right. but tech is not everything um uh, at the end of the day no matter what ai you work on you come back home your dal chawal achar is what you want right. you're not going to consume tech right tech is just an enabler so i think 
slowly people have to also start realizing that you have to be good at what you're doing your product has to be good your offering has to be good and you stick to enable that to take that forward you don't have to necessarily be doing something uh, you know uh, gigantic mm. for you to be called a startup or for you to start thinking like a startup itself right we are we are coming to almost the close of this so two big takeaways that to me as a novice in this uh, i pick up one you don't have to be an app to be a startup uh, you don't you know tech is only a enabler and the second thing is you find your own word to explain what a startup is uh, and and you know that's a fascinating yeah. story right if we use that word madan and i'm just wanting quick final comments if we use that word then we can't call ourselves the startup capital we we should call ourselves the modala hedge capital right <laughs> so uh, vira i think you summarized it beautifully imagine now every kid in every school having that spark in his eye to say i am outside of comfort my comfort zone i can dream dare to dream and it did not have to be tech i can do anything which is local and especially now if you look at the digital public infrastructure that's coming in the whole local yeah. distributed models that will emerge the opportunities are a plenty nobody needs to come to only to bangalore to succeed you can be in that jambardi grama. grama in uh, sakleshpur and yeah. still build a world class brand right that's how right. do we bring that energy right uh, is something that uh, you know we are we are very excited at thai bangalore and at the global alliance for mass entrepreneurship the whole thing is to build that movement from ground up yes and largely that's that's also one of the big a- aims of unboxing as well right when we are exploring this standing around saying broad basing certain ideas which seem to have been confined to certain spaces mm, yes uh, and definitely you know a lot of deep tech etc that is happening a lot of that will happen in the hardware sector isn't it and some of the challenges that we have faced from our traditional mindset that you know you have to have an app software is what makes a startup i think some of that will begin to get redefined at least at the banking level at the credit level uh, as deep tech startup where hardware meets uh, software you know becomes an important proposition going forward. Right, and Mahinder, we need to now get you to start a dictionary, a startup dictionary to <laughs> redefine startup in all languages. Right? <laughs> Absolutely, I can add more to it. Uh, you, you call it tech, I call it uh, human t- touch. Uh-huh. Right, and one thing we do in Hatti Coffee is beyond coffee. Beyond coffee is so fascinating. It's my, you know, very dear to my heart, very emotional. There, I bring, uh, rather, we bring people, uh, especially the girls who are visually impaired. That is beyond. Beyond is the, uh, the the just out of Hatti Cup, you know. Yeah. We started a store. You will be fascinated to hear that. We pulled out Chumbita, Nagraj, and Musamil, or 100% visually impaired. They have no clue. They have been in dark. So the what beyond us is we pulled out right. from wherever they are. Put up a store. Where do we put up a store? We go to one of the best high hospitals in Bangalore, Netra Dama. We create a store there. And three. three uh, muzamil and i would always say the muzamil chumbita and nagraj they are on a store and what a great message in an eye hospital yeah. there's a message telling you take care of your eyes you take care of vision we know the value of that and that store is trending rocking it's going viral you know don't need a tech to certain thing you need a human what's that to old it. what's that old saying lot can happen over coffee, coffee yeah. lot can have happen over copy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> put it that way and uh, finally last word to you vasuda uh pickles of course without that life is spiceless uh what would be your message to let's say somebody sitting at home who's a fascinating pickle maker because i know a lot of friends of mine who make fantastic avakais and avakai season's going to start now uh what would be your one quick message to them um i think uh, not just to them but to everybody out there who wants to uh, you know dream who who is dreaming big Uh, I think we shouldn't we shouldn't get intimidated by you know the tech jargons that come go all around us, and we should just take that modalane hedge like Mahinder said. And um, I think the entrepreneurial journey is all about one step at a time, right? Like I mean, uh, and the world is so volatile. Uh, a lot of things have changed after the pandemic, so we can't really think of the traditional. I have a five-year plan. I have a ten-year plan for entrepreneurs. Every day matters. So I think we should just. take one step at a time every day uh sit back at the end of the day think about what have you done for the day and what can i do tomorrow like too much of planning also can be very intimidating so right. so that's what i think take one step at a time and 
and but don't forget your dream right so. take that model and a hedge to change the mindsets i think that's the core of this entire conversation that we are having we'll have many more from bengaluru like this breaking stereotypes exploring the city exploring fascinating different conversations breaking definitions and confining people to certain defined spaces but that's all we have time for on this thanks for watching